A Prayer Against the Fear of Man From the book Nicodemus, or A Treatise Against the Fear of Man by Augustus Herman Franke, Professor of Divinity at the University of Halle, H-A-L-L-E, and also the man that took care of all the orphans in Germany by the provisions of God only, the forerunner of George Mueller. A Prayer Against the Fear of Man O Lord, whose wisdom is everlasting and power infinite, and whose eyes are open over the ways of the children of men, to give to every one according to his ways, and the fruit of his doings. It is manifest to thee that the fear of man, by which thy glory and majesty is denied, and thy infinite power, which thou hast shown from the beginning, is despised and made to truckle under the nothingness of mortal men, who are but dust and ashes, bears the sway everywhere, and is the mother of innumerable crimes and abominable sins, though generally esteemed by men as part of prudency and ranked in the number of virtues. O Lord, how deeply are we sank and plunged into atheism and a denial of thy eternal Godhead from our youth up through that general corruption that overspreads the face of the whole earth, in thee we live and move and have our being, and yet how backward are we to seek thee, if happily we might feel after thee, and find thee, though thou art not far from us, and nothing can subsist without thee. Alas, how entirely are we turned towards these outward things, though the nature of the true faith be to look, quote, not the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Unquote. This word, faith, we have much in our mouths, but not as an olive leaf of peace, for the power of faith is hardly anywhere to be found. What is all our doing when compared with the examples of the ancients? These were men indeed, and perform manly deeds, and whatever we pretended to is mere child's play and a transitory dream. We boast of faith and are put into a fright by the least rushing of a leaf, when indeed our hearts ought not to be afraid, though many hundred thousands are encamped against us round about to devour us. Art not thou, O Lord, our light and salvation? Whom then have we cause to fear? Art not thou the strength of our life? Why then are we terrified? Do we believe that thou art with us? Why then do we fear any that are against us? Who is he that can hurt us when we have our almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, for our friend? But thou seest, O Lord, that hypocrisy has filled the earth and that men disassemble and lie to their neighbor for temporal interests, and yet for all that we imagine ourselves to be in a good state and think the church in a flourishing condition. But be thou pleased, O Lord, to inspect our case, and to create a help for us. Send forth again the spirit of faith, as of old, that thy servants may be known, by their not being the servants of men, and thy messengers, by being raised above the fear of tyrants. O Lord, let the simplicity and cheerfulness of thy servants, despise of the world, shine forth and flourish again, whom thou didst make use of as thy mouth, and didst confirm their testimony by thy sufferings and thy wonderful assistancy, honoring those who honor thee without any respect of persons. Thou did make them a fenced wall of brass, which every one did fight against, but could not prevail over them. For thou didst deliver them out of the hands of the wicked, and didst redeem them out of the hands of the terrible ones. O Lord, let thy face shine upon us again, that we may behold thy glory. So shall we be healed, and thou alone magnified, and thy name only sanctified in our hearts, and through thy power we shall overcome all. 
Open the eyes of those whose feet thou hast turned into the paths of peace, and discover to them the great pearlessness of our times, that they may know how highly necessary it is for them and their soul and from the bottom of their hearts to be separated from all creatures and to be firmly united to thee by faith, to the end they may continue faithfully under all the manifold temptations which daily befall them or may assault them for the future, and that they may not suffer themselves to be drawn away with others into a perverse mind. Confound, O Lord, all false prudency, which flies back at the cross of Jesus Christ and leads the inconsiderate into the ways of Balaam. O Lord, awaken them that are asleep in the state of carnal security, persuading themselves that they faithfully serve thee, whilst in all things they endeavor only to imitate and please men. Rouse them, O Lord, that the dead may no longer bury the dead. Send thy Holy Spirit, even the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind, into the hearts of the pastors of thy church, that every one may clearly see and perceive, not in a few, but many thousands, what a vast difference there is between hirelings who are afraid of men, and of losing the temporal benefits, and the true servants of God, the ministers of the Most High, who do not seek their own, nor desire to please men, but count not their lives dear, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in their mortal bodies. Prepare the youth for thy service, and thou set safe thy blessing upon them, that they may be like arrows in the hands of the mighty. Fill many thousands with the bold and joyful spirit of thy prophets and apostles, and make them as so many polished arrows in thy hand, that they may fly straight to the mark, that so at last all the earth may be filled with thy glory. Thou safe also of thine infinite grace, thy blessing to this testimony, that many, learning thereby to mind themselves, may begin to feel their own deplorable condition, and so courageously enter upon a constant warfare against the fear of man, and through thy mighty power fully overcome and conquer it. O Lord God of hosts, hear us and comfort us again with thy help. To thy name give the glory, that thou mayest be known by all men, according as thou hast revealed thyself in thy most holy word. Amen.